irrespective of rank, proven SS men are presented with a silver death's head signet ring. The ring is based on the design created for him by Carl Philip. Its symbols are of deep mystical significance. The Sig Rule, emblem of victory. The Hagal Rule, the rune of hail, destruction, and enclosing. Included is the personal rune group of the Villigat ancestral tradition. And the swastika, symbol of the destiny of Aryan man. In 1937, Hitler decrees that the rings of all dead SS men are to be returned to him for safekeeping in a locked chest deep in the castle of Babelsberg. The return of the ring is a symbol of the dead man's eternal community with the SS order. The transformation of Himmler's SS castle is by now gaining momentum. Under the architect Hermann Bartels, the west and south wings have been fully renovated. The moat and gardens have been restored and a bridge built leading to the imposing main gates. By 1938, the east wing too has been completely renovated. True to the deeply secretive nature of the SS, Himmler has banned all but the most trustworthy from visiting Babelsberg. Bartels has virtually excluded local companies and labor from the project. Instead, contingents of the Pioneer Corps have been drafted to the region from all over Germany. In the renovation of the castle interior, Himmler spares no expense. Handling and furnishings, doors and balustrades are all of solid oak. An elaborately carved spiral staircase is built in workshops on the site. Everywhere there is the finest of decorative wrought ironwork. The chambers of SS readers, each room named after a Germanic hero, are to be filled with appropriate relics. Arms and armor are collected from all over Germany. Himmler has pronounced, may the spirit of the most distant past be the future in this castle. By the late 1930s, the National Socialist aim of increasing the population of racially desirable Germans has been given the highest national priority. The means is to remove German women from paid employment and return them to the home. Their task will be to produce the greatest possible number of children. Soon after the foundation of the Nazi state, government loans worth a year's salary are awarded to men whose wives leave their jobs. The amount which must be repaid is reduced for every child the family produces. By 1940, 1,700,000 loans will have been granted. In 1938, a decree is issued requiring that all public officials marry or resign. All couples married for five years who are still childless incur a tax penalty. Grounds for divorce are broadened to include the inability of a wife to bear children. Abortion is illegal for those classed as Aryans, but encouraged for non-Aryans. At the instigation of Heinrich Himmler, laws are passed to removing all legal obstacles to Aryan women bearing children outside marriage. Himmler has decreed, sacred to us is every mother of good blood. Of the greatest value of all are the offspring of his SS elite. In December 1935, Himmler had founded the project which would remain his obsession for almost ten years. He calls it the Mabensborn, the Spring of Life. It is a chain of maternity homes and breeding centers for his SS racial elite. 
in endless words. A nursery garden for pure Germanic blood. In Germany, there will be ten such homes, each failed in secrecy and under heavy SS guard. I fostered rumors, Himmler admits, to the effect that every single woman desiring a child could turn to maidens born in the strictest confidence. We only recommend genuinely valuable men as procreation helpers. In spite of the stringent racial qualifications required, there is no shortage of prospective mothers. The Nazi League of German Maidens has officially stated, although not every German girl can hope to find a husband, you can all become mothers. An SS Race and Resettlement Resolution of 1937 notes, the Lebensborn will bring them together with a man not casually, but in full awareness that they are fulfilling a noble duty towards the nation. As a naming ceremony, the children of the Lebensborn Project are immediately immersed in the Germanic ritual of the SS clan. Males are touched on the forehead with an SS dagger, symbolizing their first initiation into Himmler's mystical order. Mothers of SS children are told, remember that you are but a link in the clan's endless chain. the question of how his SS order was to be governed. Taking his inspiration from the Knights of the Round Table, Himmler has appointed a shadowy inner council of 12 chosen SS leaders. The ritual setting for their deliberations is the castle of Wabelsberg. In the massive north tower of the castle is an inner sanctum, a vast circular hall, its walls 12 feet thick. Around the chamber stand 12 columns. On the floor is a mosaic of swastikas, forming a sun wheel of 12 radiating spokes. In this strange chamber, Himmler and his chosen 12 commune with the Aryan race soul and the spirits of the Germanic ancestors. Deep below the inner sanctum cut into the solid bedrock is the crypt, Valhalla. Here are performed ceremonies of the dead. In the center, the wooden coats of arms of a dead SS knight are to be ceremonially burnt. Twelve stone pits around the walls will hold twelve urns each of which will one day hold the armorial ashes of a departed knight. In the crypt burns an eternal flame, symbol of the continuity of the order and its eternal mission in the service of the race. In 1937, Heinrich Hitler, speaking to senior German army officers, proclaims, the next ten years will see a war of annihilation conducted by the subhuman enemies of the entire world against Germany, the colonel of the Teutonic race and guardian of the culture of the human race. It will mean, warns Himmler, the existence or non-existence of that white race of which we are the leading nation. In reality, the war of racial annihilation foreseen by Himmler will be the war about to be waged by Germany. For Adolf Hitler, the first step in the creation of a greater Germanic empire has been to order, in March 1936, the reoccupation of the demilitarized Rhineland. It is a blatant contravention of the Treaty of Versailles. In the wake of the occupation, the SS becomes deeply involved in the first sterilization campaign to be waged on grounds of race. 